Good morning, everyone. My name is Sophia. My name is Isabella. My name is Josiah. My name is Amy. And I'm Jason. And in a family slot, we want you to count with us how many times we say the words thank you or thanks and the word peace. Today, we will be beginning a new series called Running with Giants. And for the next six weeks, we will be looking at heroes from the Bible. I wonder what makes a hero? Do you want to be a hero? In the Bible, we find that heroes definitely don't wear capes. In fact, they are just ordinary people who let the Holy Spirit into their lives. And the Holy Spirit makes us more like Jesus. That's called having fruit of the Spirit. Do you remember Paul? He was the one who wrote the letter of Ephesians. Actually, he wrote a whole bunch of letters. He wrote one called Philippians, and in that one he says, Do not worry about anything, but pray and ask God for everything that you need. When you pray, always give thanks. Then God's peace will keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. The peace God gives is so great that we cannot understand it. Well, that sounded like a lot of words, but what does it all mean? Well, Paul is saying that we don't need to worry about anything, and instead, when we pray and thank God, he gives us his peace. So when we pray and thank God, we get peas? I thought peas were a vegetable, not a fruit. No, not peas, peace. OK, I know what peas are, but what is peace? Well, peace is like a special calm from God. OK, OK, so when we pray and thank God, we get a special calm from God. Is that one of the fruits of the Spirit? Yes, that's right. So, when Paul wrote the letter to the Ephesians, he was under house arrest. What does that mean? It means he wasn't allowed to leave his house. Hmm. That sounds a bit like us in lockdown. Yeah, I, I suppose it does. It said that Paul wasn't allowed to order takeaways or even get Amazon deliveries. But anyway, now that Paul is talking about giving our worries to God, saying thank you to God, and God giving us peace, where do you think he was? Do you think he was? Still under house arrest. At a party with his friends. Or on the beach eating ice cream. And the answer is, he was still under house arrest. What? How could he still be saying thank you to God if he wasn't free? Well, Paul had some tough days, but he kept on saying thank you to God because he knew that God was good. Hmm, maybe this next video of Paul and Silas in prison will help us understand a little bit better. I've had a hard day. Our new puppy chewed a hole in my favorite shirt. My brother ate the last of the cereal and I stepped in a puddle and my socks got all wet. Oh, and I almost forgot. I also bit my tongue. Hard days remind me of Paul and Silas in the Book of Acts. Trust me, they had some really hard days. Kind of like my day? Even worse, Paul and Silas went all the way to Rome to teach people about Jesus. They did amazing things there through God's power. That all sounds pretty great to me. Well, some people didn't like it. They took Paul and Silas to the city rulers and accused them of causing trouble. Then, the rulers ordered soldiers to beat Paul and Silas with wooden rods. That's awful! It was. Then they put Paul and Silas in prison and told the jailer to make sure they didn't escape. Were Paul and Silas really upset? Actually, they prayed and sang songs of praise to God while the other prisoners listened. Then, around midnight, there was a huge earthquake. Great, so things got even worse? No, they got better. As the prison shook, the doors flew open and the prisoners' chains fell off. Then- Wait, let me guess. Paul and Silas and all the other prisoners escaped? That's what the jailer thought too. When he woke up and found the prison doors open, he thought all the prisoners must have gotten out. He was so afraid, he took out his sword to kill himself. What? Why would he do that? He thought the soldiers would kill him anyway for not doing his job. But just then, Paul called out to him from inside the jail. He said, wait, don't kill yourself. See, we're all still here. Wait, you mean no one escaped? That's right. Since Paul and Silas chose to praise God, even though they were wrongfully imprisoned, all the prisoners were amazed. They did the right thing. They didn't escape, even when they had the chance. The jailer must have been really happy. He was. He took Paul and Silas to his house, where they ate a meal together. And Paul and Silas got to tell everyone in the jailer's family about Jesus. Everyone believed and was baptized. Wow, Paul and Silas made a big difference, even on a hard day. Yep, even when things were hard, they showed everyone that God is always good, no matter what else is going on.
You know what? God is good. All the time. Paul had practiced saying thank you to God, whether he was having a good day or a bad day. So even when he was under house arrest, he was still able to say thank you to God. OK, I think I get it. So if I practice something every day, then after a while it gets easier, like if I practice my spellings every day. So if you say practice football every day, then you become really good at it. And you can do it under difficult conditions, such as when it's raining or really windy. OK. If I practice saying thank you to God every day, then even when I don't feel like saying thank you, then I'll, I will still be able to do it and I'll get peace, that special calm. Did you count how many times we said thank you and peace, including the ones I'm saying now? We said thank you 12 times and peace 9 times. Well done for counting. And now it's over to you for some singing and dancing.